I discovered Aikido totally by chance, by seeing a documentary on television, French television. And uh, I never did any martial arts before, or I was not interested in Japan or whatever. I just saw that and it was a shock. So I called the, uh, it was a very small city in France. I called the city hall and asked if there was uh, Aikido you know, classes available in the city and they were. So I went to the dojo, I, you know, the teacher there was very nice. He, he had been studying under Nakazono Sensei and he was in the Tamura Sensei at the time. So that's where I started. And a few years later, I got to know Tamura Sensei, of course, and I was going to seminars and he invited Chiba Sensei, who was living in England at the time. So this is 1972 or three. And that was the second shock. When I saw him, I went, whoa, yeah, that's what I want to do. And Chiba Sensei left England in 1976 to go back to Japan uh, to work at Hombu. So I followed him the, the following year in 1977 and I went to, go, I, I went to uh, Japan to uh, study under him at Hombu. So tell us a little bit uh, how it was when you arrived in Japan and your first practice. I, went, I took the first class that I ever took at Hombu was Chiba Sensei's class because Chiba Sensei was sort of uh, sponsoring me at Hombu. And so I went to his class first go to the class, do the warm-up, and the guy I'm practicing with is beating me up like crazy. He's grinding me by the hair and hitting me, boom! And Chiba Sensei came over and told him, in Japanese I didn't know at the time, I learned after that, he said, slow down, he's just arrived, you know, he doesn't know anything. So he's, he saved my life in a way. And me, I was thinking, man, if the Japanese are all like this, I have to go home because I will never make it. But I bought a one-way ticket, so I couldn't go home. I didn't have the money to get back. So anyway, it just happened that this was Shibata Sensei at the time. You know, six down, Shihan, he had a class at Hombu. And he was a monster, you know. So that was my first class. The next day I went to the hairdresser, pew! I got rid of the hair, so I couldn't grab it anymore. But just to say that class at that time uh, at Hombu, it, it was pretty rough. It was not bad, but it was serious tra training. So you could get hit easily and, and there was no giving up. So com compared to the, that time and now, do you feel that the, the practice uh, in like the change? Or in like well, it, didn't, it, it did change in a way that if you get into a fight, you know, Doshu would look the other way. He didn't care whether there was a fight or not. Now, nowadays, Doshu today is not so keen on fights. He doesn't want trouble in the dojo. So it, in, in this way, it has changed a little bit. And uh, I heard that you uh, make a, a group of private class that is start to study with Chiba Sensei. Uh, when, when I arrived, the group existed already. Because Chiba Sensei had only one class. So they uh, created a group, seven, seven, six, seven people, and asked uh, Chiba Sensei to have private uh, classes with him inside Hombu Dojo. So you would pay Hombu Dojo a fee, a separate fee, and have these class, uh, private classes when there were no other classes going on. And it was a little bit more um, uh, rough than other teachers. Not violent, don't get me wrong, rough. Uh, it would go to the end of it. So you better take Ukemi. And this went on until uh, Chiba Sensei left uh, Japan again. I think it must have been 81 or 82, I'm not sure about that. He went to the US, so uh, the group sort of dissolved. You always talk about Chiba Sensei, but you are very connected with many of the instructors of Hombu Dojo. So I, I, I say some names and you say what you've, you, you've taken from some, some of these teachers. From Kishimaru Dojo, what do you feel that you... It's the book. Kishimaru Sensei is the book. 
So A, B, C, D, you know. And uh, Arikawa Sensei? Arikawa Sensei was a little genius of, uh, of uh, martial arts. So for him, Aikido was way more open than it was for many other teachers. He would, uh, he would go into Jiu-Jitsu, he would finish you on the ground, separate your head from your body, you know, tore a limb. Uh, his idea of Aikido was to take your arm away from the torso. See, so Wescom, it was more physical, more uh, complete. You were scared to death because you understood that he could kill you anytime he wanted. And uh, Yamaguchi Sensei? Yamaguchi Sensei was subtility. He, he never trained with O Sensei, he never trained with Kishomaru Doshu. He just appeared one day and six months later he's a teacher at home. And uh, Osawa Sensei father? Osawa Sensei, the father, uh, was uh, m closer to uh, Kishomaru Doshu. He was close to the book. And uh, Chiba Sensei? That Chiba Sensei was a young teacher, so Chiba Sensei was very lucky because when he was an Uchideshi in Hombu, you know, O Sensei was living in Iniwama, but he would travel a lot in Japan to give conferences to uh, the group of the former religious sect called uh, um, Omo Omo Omotokyo. So he was invited here and there to give lectures, and he would illustrate what he was saying with Aikido. So for that, he needed somebody to take Okimi. He also needed somebody to carry the luggage for him. So he would drop by Hombu, pick someone, one of the deshi, who would go with him and be the Kabamochi and Uke. And Shiva Sensei was very eager to learn from O Sensei. So he always was volunteering, you know, me, 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 me. So Chiba, uh, O Sensei would take him. So he learned a lot from O Sensei, from you know, listening and from taking Ukemi from him. So for me, it was the only direct link to O Sensei yeah, that we could get some idea of what O Sensei uh, Aikido was. Well, um, well, Aikido was created by uh, O Sensei, uh, Ueshiba Morie, before the war, and he stopped teaching in 1940 when the war started, the Pacific War. He retired to Iwama and he occasionally taught a few classes in Iwama for the local people and Saito Sensei was there helping him. But in 1948, uh, f somehow Kishomaru Doshu managed to get permission from the Americans, from the occupation troops, to start again, to open the dojo again. To do that, he had to drop the, the idea of martial arts. So he never mentioned martial arts. He created a foundation, a cultural foundation. And Aikido became a cultural asset of Japan, Japan culture, and he got permission to reopen. So it was a new face of Aikido. It was Kishomaru Doshu's Aikido. It's got nothing to do, more or less, with O Sensei's Aikido. So the people that started to do Aikido after the war, after 1948, and who became the teachers that we all know, uh, you know, the one that were in Japan teaching at Hombu, but also the one that then went out in the world and spread Aikido all over, are Kishomaru Doshu's Aikido people. There is little in common with, Doshu, with uh, O Sensei, although it's the same thing. So I don't know if this it, is clear or not. It's, it's the same Aikido, but it's different, right? So it's important to know that because we don't really know what Osense's Aikido was because the teachers that we have, have uh, learned from, they were not Osense's students. They were Kishomaru Doshu students. So it makes a big difference. In your, what, in your opinion? What are the differences between having only one teacher and a student in a school with many classes and many teachers? It doesn't make sense to have one teacher. Aikido is something that you build for yourself. It's personal. It's a discipline. It's not a sport. Right? You don't learn, you're not learning tricks like boxing. You learn tricks. The, the, the coach, he sees what you do and it, it coach, it's coaching you. Aikido, you don't coach people. You have something that is totally personal, depends on your physique, if you're big, if you're small, if you're large, right? It's different. So you have to see as many 
teaches as possible so that you have an idea of what it is. And then you steal from every one of them. You take what they know and you make it yours. So if you have only one teacher, you're limited to what that teacher knows. Uh, but if you widen this, if you open it up, then you take from every teacher that you can see. Like when you train, you train with anybody. You don't train with one person. You train with as many people as possible because they have different bodies. So your technique is going to be different, which is one of them. So learning is important that you learn from as many people as possible and get what they know. So Hombu was paradise for that. You have all these great teachers and you can go five hours a day and get all this information. If you have one teacher, it's kind of uh, very restricted. You have been training for more than 40 years with no interruptions. How important is your personal training and how does this shape your understanding of Aikido? You can't stop training. If you stop training, this is it. You're dead. You can only stop when you die. It's a process of learning until you, you finish, until you die, because you never know. Every time that, every, after every session of training, you have new doors opening. You discover things. So you cannot stop training. It's impossible. If you stop training, then you stop improving. You finished there. As teaching, it's also practicing. If you stop moving, I don't see how you can improve. For some structures, training with weapons is a tool that helps to understand the Aikido technique. For others, Boken and Joe are independent disciplines that need to be studied separately. How do you relate weapons and Aikido? But for me, it's only one thing. It's, uh, uh, Aikido is weapons. It's weapon without the weapons. It's happy-handed, but everything that we do in Aikido is related to weapon. It's always cutting, <coughs> either straight, either kesagiri. You move, uh, irimi, tenkan, ushiro tenkan, these are moves that you study when you do weapons. So Aikido comes from weapons. It comes from holding and being able to draw the sword so that you can cut. And for me, I don't see how you cannot study weapons and study Aikido. It doesn't make sense. It has to be one thing, weapons and Aikido. And uh, in your class, you always talk about uh, time, distance and control. So can you explain uh, more this, this concept to you and why this apply in your own Aikido? What, what is Aikido? What, it's about, it's about relating to somebody that is attacking you. But actually, you have to induce that attack. You have to be more clever than your opponent is. So you're going to put your opponent in a position that you control. Right? To do that, you have to control yourself. You have to know what you are doing. Shiva Sensei called the three W. When, where, why. Right? So this is what you have to think. So this is totally related to distance and timing. If somebody has become aggressive in front of you, you're going to try to move so that you're going to induce his movement, his motion towards you. By controlling yourself, you're controlling him or her. So for me, basically, all the training is about this. How can I you know, control myself to control the opponent? And then Aikido has all these movements, all these motions, its technique that puts you in a variety of situations and positions. And then when you master the technique, then you become a master. You become free of the technique. It's there, it's in you. You keep you know, training every day so that the technique stays uh, good, but you're free from it. So you can improvise, for instance. You're going to create it. That's the technique that's you, that you practice, and one day it's one thing. So then you don't have to worry about it. You are, mm -mm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Since you practice for so long time, do you still feel that uh, you are uh, stuck in some kind of movements that uh, you, you should improve? That oh yeah, plenty of them. Plenty of them that you're, you're not happy with it. You know? Because I think by practicing again and again and again, you get, you're getting, hopefully you're getting better. And by getting better, you see new, new possibilities. So you say, okay, if you climb a mountain that is this big, you say, good, I'm going to try this one and then this one. 
because you get better. And when you get better, it opens doors, whatever you do. But Aikido, the great thing about this, it's, it's endless. You know, it's, there's no limits of what you can do. After many years of training and with much knowledge about the art that, that you practice, how important do you think is the need to pass the acknowledgement to the next generation? But there is no need. It's up to the people. If, the, if somebody wants to do it, I'm there. I'm ready to, you know, to, to practice. So if you invite me to teach a seminar, I'm happy to do it. Well, it's like for, again, it's like from every other form of art uh, or training. You have to find the masters and you have to study under them because they know things. And you have to take, you have to absorb these things that they know. But you cannot tell people that they have to do it. It's for you to say, oh, that, that seems to be interesting. Maybe I can try that and then you get involved in it. It's open. There will always be some good teachers somewhere. So you have to be curious, you have to go find them and train with them. Now the new generation, it's their problem, it's not mine. If they want to know, we are here, right? They come, they've been taught. I'm not going to get them and say, oh, you have to study this. No, no, no. Uh, my name is Didier, Didier Boyer. Boyer is my family name. I'm, I'm going to be 72 in a few weeks. And I've been doing Aikido most of my life uh, since I started in 1971. And that's it, that's me. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome.